traditionally network operations centers have had silos between the layer one group who takes care of issues in that department and the layer three and two elements, the routing and switching layer. If there is a problem at layer three and the NOC detects it, then they're really doing the diagnostics at that layer three level. They're not really looking down further into uh, where that problem may be. Uh, if it turns out that that issue is at layer one, then they often pass this off to another group who has to start doing the diagnostics from scratch. Our goal here is to begin integrating multi-layer visualization into the product. And we're going to be looking today at a layer three and layer one visualization and how that may speed diagnostics of problems. So I have a customer that calls in and they have an issue getting from one portion of the network to another portion of the network. This may be a service that they're trying to get to across the topology. I can see from Seattle to JFK, I do have a valid path forward and reverse from that source to that destination and back again. Um, this issue came in a while ago, so while I'm looking at the network at this point in time, really the issue was happening maybe 20 minutes ago. And so what I really want to do is rewind time to an earlier point in time to see was this issue happening in my network when the customer is calling in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill down on this issue. And we're looking at a layer three topology map and a layer three path net map along this. So you can see the various hops. Uh, I can look at the pieces of the hops as well, the cost to get from each individual hop, the interfaces and so on. But I do have a clear path across from that topology. One of the things I do see though is the availability on one of these links is less than 100%. So during this time frame, this time frame here, uh, we do have some downtime that we see during one, for one of these links during this time period. And what I want to do is I want to look at what was happening at that time period. So we're going to play through a little bit of the issue and have it step through time to see about when that problem happened and what happened at that point in time. So what I see here is I've got the previous path that we were looking at, and I've got a new path across the topology as well. And here, if we look at this link, it's marked in red. This is the one that had the availability issues. Um, if we look in the OSPF, we can see events that might have been associated with that. But in general, this uh, this link is marked as down. And so that's an issue within this. And, and what happened was it then rerouted along a new path. So was this issue at layer three or was this issue happening at layer one or one of the lower layers? So currently we have uh, a layer one topology under this. And so if I open this layer one topology will stretch it out here and you can see the path along here that it takes. And very similar to this red marking here, if there was a down issue across this topology, we would also mark one of these as down. So what this tells me is that I've got a problem at layer three rather than at layer one within this topology. If this were at layer one and one of these links were down, then we'd be able to drill down on that as well. So for example, if I click on this connection, uh, I can look at the details at layer one, all the resources, whether this is admin up, and you can see that those are uh, SRLG values that are associated with that, uh, all of the interfaces that are configured across that layer one link. I can also drill into this connection between these two elements and see a context map that's associated directly with this link. So uh, again, I can show the values that are listed here, what type of hardware it is, a CNS 6500, and I could look at any events that might have happened in the last 10 minutes, one hour, one day, etc. I can also look at the uh, interfaces that are configured on the system, but probably more importantly is to look at the services that are across this topology. And I can see the, the name associated with this, 
these are the the services that we see running across this. This is active. It's running on ODU2. And I can see the links that it's transiting here at layer three as well. So I can look at the services here and this will allow me if I'm diagnosing a problem at layer one and I see a layer one context path across here, I can then climb back up to the layer three topology to see what was happening at that point in time. So in this case, this will take me back up to that ORD to Seattle link. You can see the downtime during that uh, period and the issue that we were originally brought us to uh, this drill down. If I wanted to look at the issues that were happening at layer three, I can come down and drill into the types of events that were uh, listed here. I can see the drop neighbor. This is when that link went down. So you can see the, the down interface here. You can also see the exact time when that went down. Being able to understand a topology at multi layers, uh, being able to look not only at the layer three topology, but at the underlying infrastructure at layer one and soon to be layer two, will be able to understand uh, across all of these layers, what's changing within the topology, bringing all of this capability into the network operations center where they can, in a single uh, view, be able to understand what's down, what's active, and what the performance are of all of those elements, layer one, two, and three, gives them the ability to diagnose problems more quickly. And then if they're not responsible for those layers, be able to pass that information over to another group that may be working on that same issue.